Hey, yep, hope you're well. Right, this little uh, video is on a team. Here is my dodgy drawing team again. Now, the team could be um, a rugby team, basketball sports orientated team, but of course, it could be a social group like scouts. Uh, to some extent, it even could be a family. And yeah, that's what I mean by a team. Now, the drawing here I've drawn, that's the team. And of course, hopefully, you're spotting the theme from the other videos. Is each member of the team obviously has a network of friends outside of the of the team? Okay, shown here, network teams. Okay, and then obviously, what can happen is something happens here, which affects this person, which affects this person, which affects this person, which eventually affects my team member, which then affects my team. So I have lots of external influences. Of course, every team member has that network. So if I actually drew the true network, I would cover the entire park and probably be thrown out of the park, which I don't want to do, obviously. <laughs> okay. So the question is, as a, as a, as a, if I'm managing the team, this team here, it's a team of basketball, the external influences will impact the performance of my team. So that gives me a choice. How do I stop that? Because it's having a negative impact. One of my players is now not turning up or is a bit down. He might be my top player, which means my whole team suffers. So I have a choice to make. I can, choice one, is exert more control. So what I can do is I can put more control on my players, exert more control on my players, in the extreme, which I'd never do this, but I guess some people do, um, is break the connections from outside and isolate the team so that the team is all mine. Um, I've never ever done that, but I guess it is a choice. Okay, so it's exert control on the players. Okay. Now before I do the other one, I'm going to have to do a little left field mind jump, if you like. So hopefully you'll come with me. So here we go. Go on. Right. Here's a little experiment I played with uh, that worked a treat for me. Right, so the circle is a defined area. Okay, we, we, laid, we laid a rope down the grass area, but it could just as easily be an office. Now these are individuals, players if you like, or family members or whatever. And then this is the leader, me. So what we did was, I was given the goal to make sure that everybody stayed one and a half metres away from each other. The team members had to keep walking, they weren't allowed to stand still. My job was to say, go left, go right, go backwards to each of the individual players so that they never bumped into each other. Okay, I managed that with about five, six players. Dump in ten players and fifteen players and I'm going, oh, oh, and I lose control. And they start bumping into each other. I can't physically direct that many people without them hitting each other. Mm -hmm. That's option one. We then pulled away, tried a new rule. This one, we gave the rule of staying one and a half metres away to each individual player. So they only had their own rule. Keep one and a half metres away from everybody. Go. And then they walk around, same thing supplied, they can't stop, they've got to keep moving. Okay, obviously it worked. We then dumped in 10 players, 20 players, and it still worked because everyone is making their own individual choices according to that rule called go left, go right, to keep one and a half metres away from everyone. It was a lot less stressful for me, because I just had to make sure they understood the rule and sat back. Okay. Okay, so what I found is, so, we, so the, that's another way of running, of interacting with the players. So if we jump back over to our issue over here, so we had a choice of control, I exert more control on the team, or I have this one. Choice. I embed choice at the heart of my team. By this I mean each individual player gets choices in how they play their game in their different positions. And my job effectively becomes to simplify the game down so they've got choices, and then to provide the technical support so they know how to implement their choices. Okay, so if I embed choice at the heart of my team, what I found is a simplified choice is easier to make. Simplified choice is easier to make. 
So what I do is I take my game, say basketball or rugby, and I create the simplified choices for each player in their different positions. And I explain those choices to them. What we then do is I then provide the technical support for them so they know how to implement their choices. So each time they're making choice, making choice, making choice, I'm teaching them effectively to think for themselves. Okay, so what I found is, is when I've done that, it actually helps this player, with all the external influences, starts to make their own choices over how they deal with the external pressures. So does he, so does he, so does he. And the team becomes a place where they enhance and increase their ability to make choices, which impacts their entire lives. So my team becomes a place from which they learn to manage the stresses of life. And that feels much more, much more right to me. It feels better to me than exerting more control over them. Okay, hopefully that's making sense. Um, yeah, I suppose the final point is to do that. In order, I can only do that if they all follow the, the, the concept of a, the same simplified format of choice. So if they're all making choices in different ways, they're not going to function as a team because the choices won't naturally link into each other. So what I need to do is to help them all make the similar choices in a similar way, which is why I developed the technique, a simple technique to simplify the choices for them that they can all follow. And it's this technique that I've put inside my book, which, unsurprisingly, called, is called How to Simplify a Choice. Okay? Now that is it. So thanks a lot. Have a great day. Bye-bye.